today's episode, we chat with Catherine Turkel, the president of Novus Therapeutics. Her company develops innovative therapies for patients suffering from ear, nose, and throat disorders. Recently, Catherine visited KGI to talk with School of Pharmacy students. During this interview, Catherine talks about mentors being instrumental during her career, and she also highlights the characteristics she looks for in future Novus Therapeutics leaders. It's always fascinating to learn about how everyone develops their passion in a field. So to start off, can you share how you became interested in pharmacy? I have an interesting story with regards to how I became a pharmacist. And first and foremost, it had absolutely nothing to do with my aspiration to be a pharmacist. My best friend in high school, her grandfather was a pharmacist. She always wanted to be a pharmacist. And so she had a clear idea of her path for her future when we finished high school. I, on the other hand, only knew I wanted to go to college. So when she was looking at colleges, she went to the University of the Pacific, which has a school of pharmacy, because she envisioned that's where she would go to school, because of course she wanted to be a pharmacist, and I went with her for the campus visit. And what I found when I got to the campus was, wow, the school is so pretty. It had the number one women's volleyball team in the US at that time, and I was a big volleyball player. They had a marching band, and I was very involved in the band, and I just fell in love with the school itself. The problem was it was a private campus and a private college, very expensive, and my family really couldn't afford to send me there, especially when I had no particular reason to go to that school. So I had to come up with a reason why I wanted to go to that school, and at the time, the only colleges in California that had schools of pharmacy were UCSF. USC, which both required an undergraduate degree first before you could go to pharmacy school. But UOP had a special program where you could do two years of undergraduate and then apply and go straight to pharmacy school and do a three-year accelerated program. And I sold my parents on that, you know, that they'd only have to pay for five years of college and I would come out with a graduate degree level program. And there was a reason for me to go to that school and not other schools because it was a school of pharmacy. And honestly, that's how I became a pharmacist because I loved the campus because it was pretty. Can you also share how mentors played a role in the first few years of your career? Yes, rent mentors have played a big role for me in uh, my career. And, and I also mentor many people because I gained such value from the mentors that I had. Some mentors have been more involved than others, but early in my career, I was a clinical pharmacist practicing in a community hospital. I was the only clinical pharmacist at that time in that hospital, and I worked very closely with the nurses and physicians in the intensive care unit. And in particular, there was an infectious disease physician who really took an interest in the contribution that I made to the team. It had been the first time he'd worked with a clinical pharmacist, and he recognized in me really an innate skill that I have, that I'm inquisitive, that I'm analytical, and that I'm a problem solver. And he encouraged me to think about further developing my research career. And because of the mentoring that he provided to me in that environment, I actually ended up leaving that position and going back into sort of an academic environment where I pursued a fellowship training in critical care pharmacy. And after that residency training, specializing in critical care pharmacy. And ultimately I became a practicing clinical pharmacist specialized in critical care medicine and worked in a surgical intensive care unit pharmacy for several years. And it was all because of that mentor who inspired me and saw something different in me that helped me pursue my path in a specialization as a clinical pharmacist. And you mentioned the the fellowship opportunities Uh, here at KGI. We're starting a fellowship program. So I know our our doctor of pharmacy, our PharmD students are excited about all the opportunities that are coming forward in that program. And switching gears to your current role as president of Novus Therapeutics, can you describe the company and its vision? Yes, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to tell you a little bit more about Novus. We are a publicly traded company. Um, We trade on the NASDAQ, NVUS, and our vision is that we want to develop new therapies for ears, nose, and throat disorders, ENT disorders. And this is an area of uh, the pharmaceutical development environment that I think has really been lagging behind. There are a lot of different, very serious and complex ENT 
disorders that really have no treatments available to address. The focus that we are taking on at this point in time is in the area of otitis media, which is inflammation of the middle ear. And this is a disorder that affects 700 million people worldwide. It's a highly prevalent disorder. Um, many people develop a secondary uh, infection in their middle ear as a result of otitis media, and so they get prescribed antibiotics. But the reality is there is no treatment, drug treatment, to address the underlying cause um, of otitis media, and we believe that we have a solution to that unmet need, and we're very excited about embarking upon the path to develop this treatment. We are at the very early stages of this development program. We are in the process of formulating the drug itself, and then we hope to be in phase one clinical trials by the end of this year. To follow up on on you talking about your, your role as president, just curious, how do you go about kind of building and developing your leadership team? So Novus is a very small company. Even though we are a publicly traded company, we are currently seven employees. So we are almost a startup. Uh, we have three more employees that we hope two more for sure that are joining uh, later this month, and we hope one more certainly by the end of June. Uh, the company, because we are so small, is very focused on hiring talent for people who not only have area of expertise in whatever that area is that they bring to the table, but also those that are really good team members. Because the reality is with so few people in a company – with so much work that needs to be done, you have to be able to be flexible and still have fun at your job while taking on tasks that you may have no experience and no expertise in. So part of what I inspire to achieve as a leader in this organization is to ensure that people are given opportunities to grow and stretch in ways that may make them a little bit uncomfortable, but to have fun along the way and to know that they're supported and that we are working together with one vision and one goal in mind. And I also inspire to ensure that everybody recognizes that ultimately what we're doing is developing a treatment for patients. So I also try and bring as part of my leadership to the organization, the reminder of who is the ultimate customer of the product that we're developing, helping them to understand the disease, what is otitis media, why is it important for us to develop a treatment for this disorder, and then to bring stories back to the employees with regards to my interactions and seeing patients in the clinic who are suffering from otitis media, as well as to bring back the information that physicians are sharing about their excitement that we are actually pursuing a treatment to address this very important unmet need. Here in Claremont, the first class of KGI PharmD students are graduating this May. What advice do you have for them as they enter their careers? Well, I had the privilege today to speak to two different classes of students, and it was very energizing to see their excitement and their enthusiasm for the career path that they've chosen. And I want to encourage them in that regard because the pharmaceutical industry really needs the kind of talent and education that the students are getting here. So I shared with them that once you enter the workplace environment, uh, it becomes increasingly difficult to find time to focus on yourself and to develop yourself and to become really knowledgeable about who you are as the unique person that you are. And I encourage the students to not lose their enthusiasm for continually learning and growing about themselves so that they can, in the work environment, put themselves in positions where they can leverage the innate strengths and unique characteristics and talents that they bring to the table that nobody else does. And the more you know about yourself and what makes you happy in the work environment, the better employee you'll be for those of us that are looking for the kind of talent and education that these students have. Well, certainly, Catherine, we thank you very much for taking the time, you know, not only to be on this podcast, but also talking to those two pharmacy classes. And certainly we appreciate you sharing insight about your inspirational leadership and all the work that's happening there at Novus Therapeutics. So